or a roll of tape, washers, anything to block the knife. Because if you don't, and you're making this cleft graph, or you're you're making this cut right here, and you're holding it like this with your hand, I guarantee you, eventually, you will cut your hand. So now I'm going to go back to you. Um, looking for a whipping tongue is the goal. So, safety first. Um, my elbows are against my torso, and I am not. Ro there, you have three angles of variation here, here, and here. If you are not used to grafting and the muscle memory, you haven't developed the muscle memory of it. It's very easy to be inconsistent. So notice that when I'm when I'm moving this knife, I am not rotating my wrist in any way. Right? It's just solid. It's like somebody tugged my elbow. So when, I, when I'm looking down, I am looking to see that I am making a perfectly flat cut. So I have more strength and control when it's like right up against my body. Um, men tend to do it up here. You guys have upper body strength, right? What I don't have in power, I need to make up for in technique. So I'm going to cut this off so I can press cut. Oops, don't drop the knife. That's right. Safety first. See, that was a bad cut. See all that curve? You don't want that, right? Mm, okay. That's a that's a bad example. Straight cut. Right. My problem is that my I think I need some safety tape around my glove so that I have better grip. Another thing is that I hit a bud, so that affected the smoothness of the cut. See, this is totally, um, yeah. So, this would be the goal. A very long, narrow V, right, on one side, or on both sides, really. So this is actually lopsided, but we're gonna go with it. Oh, I know what I'm doing. I'm making a cleft graph. Nope, no, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna go back to whip and tongue. So with a whip and tongue, what I want to do is about an inch long from one side to the other end. Right? Like that. So see how that's totally flat? So the bevel um, grafting knife is flat on one side. That's why it's a grafting knife. This is a right-handed grafting knife. So the part that I'm keeping the flat part is against here so that there's no curve on what's left, right? So this is your goal. What you want is two of these. So what I'm looking for is same similar diameter. If I don't have a grafting knife, how how far behind am I if I'm just using a you can use, uh, you, you can, um, it's just sort of, you know, right tool for the right job, but you can, you can use like, like an Opinol French knife. Um, the bevel is very, very narrow on both sides, so it's almost ambidextrous. The handle's even wider, so if you have a bigger hand than I do, it can be useful. Some people use razor blades, um, I just... We graph like 500 trees like in a weekend, okay. like every year, at least for one organization. So like, I'm getting my use out of graphing. Yeah. <laughs> so the goal is that these are pretty much the same, right? Same length. This one's a little shorter. That's okay. But do you see like the goal? Yep, they have some in there. Oh, they do? Okay. Graphing knives, they yeah. still do. And I've got some too. If, uh, so, so this is the whip. The first cut is the whip. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to make the tongue, which is the back cut. So when I'm, what I'm looking for when I look down is I'm going to go about a third of the way down in ratio, a third of the way down from the top, from the end. And then I'm going to make a little nick on one side. This is a super sharp knife. A little nick, rock it over, make a little nick on the other side. I say this and I watch people do it and then they don't do it. And then it like slips. I'm telling you, it makes a difference. So I'm gonna make a little wedge so that when my sharp knife gets in there, it's not gonna move around when I, when I make this other cut. So I'm using the table for um, control. I'm flattening my knife. It is super sharp. And then I'm gonna very gently 
make this tongue. I'm taking my time and I'm gonna stop at the top of the blade. Right? See how I stopped at the top of the blade? I wanna do the same thing on the other one. So little Nick, little Nick, a third of the way down, flatten the blade and then very gently make the tongue. Now what, the reason why I'm being very gentle and extra slow in the beginning is because that bark on the outside will tend to split away from the wood and flare out. So I'm trying to prevent that. So I'm stopping at the top of the blade again, right? I'm making my own puzzle piece here. So then, now this seems to be a little bit wider, so it might not be a perfect fit, but we'll see. So you see this? It's like a little zigzag in there. So when I tape it up, it should like, it's kind of there, you can see airspace, but when you tape it up, it should seal up pretty good. Does that make sense? You can pass this around, just don't, just hold it from the bottom and be very gentle with it. 